Welcome to a quick tutorial about touching up post dipped hydrocon. A couple things that you'll need for supplies are some fine tipped paint brushes, you'll need some activator, and you'll need a, another sheet of printed out hydrographics on your hydrocon that match your design that you dipped on your substrate. So I'm going to show you how to do this, it's very simple. Okay, so first we're going to start with the Crocs to touch these up. Um, we always suggest using some kind of primer before your dip uh, to help reduce on uh, that extra color that was showing through because we had a red, a bold red color underneath. Um, so we did use a base coat on it. One Hit Wonder is a great product to use. Shout out to them. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to get our sheet of hydrocon set out here. I'm going to pick out a really fine tipped brush to start with. Um, you can use anything um, from that size. You can even go smaller. So I've got a couple different varieties ready just in case. And I've got my activator ready. So this is the activator that you use on the top of your hydrographic film. Don't want too much on here. This is some pretty potent stuff, so I recommend wearing a mask with it. So you're just gonna get your paintbrush wet with the activator and get your uh, hydrographic film or hydrocon if that's what you're using wet, and you're just gonna take off the paint. So once you've got some paint on there. You're just going to go in and you're going to find a spot that needs some of that paint and fill that in. I mean, it's, it's literally just as easy as touching up any other kind of paint or anything else. I recommend that when you're printing on Hydrocon, you try to get very dense artwork. The more dense your artwork is, the less bleeding that you're going to have on your substrate. I'm going to pull some of the black out of here so we can touch up some of these black areas. Careful how much you're touching the activator, um, or be careful how much you're holding your paintbrush, or how long you're holding your paintbrush on your substrate. You could get down to the base coat that's white. We don't want to do that. A lot of hydrographic professionals use this method. You could airbrush, uh, but when you're reactivating your hydrocon, you're actually matching the exact colors that you dipped your substrate with. So it makes sense. It's a little bit of extra effort, but in the long run, if you're just touching up little spots and you've got a substrate that's rather irreplaceable, of a one-time only custom product, this is what you want to go with. If you're worried that you didn't touch up a spot very well or you need to go back over it, let the first layer dry. And once that first layer is dry, then go back over it again with the activator and the brush. This is actually filling in really nicely. Okay, so the next piece that we're gonna work on here 
is this Outlook cover. As you can see, there are some little pinholes down here where you can see the white shining through. Uh, there's only a couple, so this should be pretty easy to touch up. Again, we're using a very fine tip brush. We use some activator here. Uh, the key thing about this is it's a pretty high detail design. So we want to find where the design started. So it looks like right about there. Um, so I know that I'm going to be pulling colors to fill in these dark purple spots from this area. Okay, so I'm just going to get wet with the activator. First layer to dry if the paint didn't go on dark enough. Let it dry and then go back over it with the same paint color to make it a little darker. So for any of you that aren't familiar with Hydrocon, Hydrocon is made here right in the USA in Duluth, Minnesota. The coldest of the cold. The great thing about Hydrocon is that it comes in so many different various forms, uh, rolls or sheets, but you're going to get the same consistency over and over again with their products. And they're going to be very well taken care of. So I'm going to use a different brush because I want to touch up with a little bit with the yellow. I tip the brush, make sure it's nice and clean. You don't want to use the same brush as before because you're going to have blending of colors. Purple and yellow will make brown. So,